안녕하세요 여러분, and welcome to another tutorial in Adobe After Effects. Today, Ace will be showing you the basics of doing glitches. If you enjoy the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Join the Discord and become a patron using the links below. Thanks for watching, and I hope you all have a great day! Hey guys, Ace here. Today we're going to be going over five different glitch methods and how I get them done. Um, first, we're going to look at each one and see what they do exactly, and then I'm going to go step by step on how I do it. And then I think you guys should be able to grasp it pretty easily because they're really not too complicated, but use them correctly and they can really add some nice accents to your video. So first one we have here is just a simple displacement map on this glitch text and I duplicated the layer and added a different layer blending mode. So I'll show you how to set that one up. And the next one we have is this uh, fractal glitch, which is, which is a similar method to the um, to the first one, but um, uses a fractal instead of... Um, uh, well, it's a, it's a fractal on both of them, but this one's a little bit different. Um, and then next one we have is the Glitchify, which Glitchify, um, you can add it on text, but I think it's better to show you on layers because there's color settings and stuff like that. So let me play this one. Now this method uses a plugin from Cinema Spice called Glitchify. There's a lot of really cool settings in that, and I'll show you what each one does and show you how to go about using that one. And the next two are uh, Universe from Red Giant. This one's um, just called Universe Glitch and it has some really cool presets and things like that that you can adjust all the settings for. Um, here's that one. And lastly we have BCC Cross Glitch which is something you could do manually but I wouldn't recommend since this plugin does it so well and makes it so much faster. So I'll show you each uh, setting in here and how to use it. Okay first we're going to start off with the displacement map methods because those require no plugins whatsoever and they're pretty simple. Um, so first off what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a solid and let me just hit Control Y or Command Y, and then I'm going to you can name that whatever you want, red, sure, it's fine, doesn't matter. And then I'm going to add a fractal noise. Okay, fractal noise. So in our fractal noise settings, I'm just going to go up to the to the noise type, and I'm going to change that to block, and then I'm going to change the complexity down to one. So we have these square blocks, and um, nothing's really happening. So I'm going to show you what you want to do from here. Uh, so this from here on is kind of personal preference, but I'm just going to show you what I'm going to do and you can um, find what you like best. So I'm going to go down to the transform settings. I'm going to uncheck uniform scaling and then that will give us options to do um, the X and Y scale of this fractal noise uh, individually. So I'm just going to increase the width about you know that much. And honestly, that should be fine right there. So you can show you what, what's going to happen. So once you have the fractal noise set up, I'm going to go ahead and pre-comp it. So control shift C. And then um, I'm going to just name this glitch mat blocks. Sure. Um, okay. And now you want to click check move all attributes into your composition. And I usually adjust it. You don't have to do that, but that's what I do. Um, and then so now we have this composition and we can turn this off actually. So from here on, all we do is add displacement map to the text or whatever you want to, the effect to be placed on. Um, displacement map okay and this one this is no plugins by the way so you just um, apply that effect to your text layer and then you can change your displacement map layer to your fractal noise comp so you go to right here to displacement map layer and change that to the comp so now what we have is let me zoom in a little bit so if we go to our displacement map settings here we can ch change the horizontal displacement and you'll see it start to break and the edges that it breaks on the exact same edges that our blocks are if that makes sense so let me go back to that comp move this over here so it's a little bit easier to see okay so um i'm going to make these blocks a little bit smaller actually i think that they're kind of too big but um but like i said this part is kind of personal preference i think i'll make this a little smaller transform um scale width i'll make these a little smaller okay about there should be good and then I'm going to go back to our comp. And um, next thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to add another displacement map. So I'm just going to hit Control, uh, select the effect, and hit Control D to duplicate the effect. So next what I'm going to do is change the settings of our second displacement map. And when you do that, you'll see that it'll start to break it a second time. And you get these kind of really cool looking, um, you know, smaller segments here. And it'll add, make your scene way more dynamic. So now we have basically the look we're trying to get. We just needed to animate back into you know the text form because you know we can't just leave it like this we need it to animate so to do that we're just going to uh keyframe all of these displacement map um values here 
the vertical and horizontals for all of these. I'm going to tap U on my keyboard. So we have all our keyframes and then I'm just going to go down some frames and then I'm going to change all of these to zero. Zero, 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 zero. Okay, so now what we have is this text animating back into normal text, but it still doesn't look right. So if I play this through, let's let's watch what happens. So it's it's grouping back together, but that doesn't look that doesn't look interesting. That's not how a glitch works. So the, right now our problem is our glitch map is not being animated. So we need to go into our glitch map and add an expression to our evolution. So um, as this evolves, the um, displacement map in our on our text will also change. So we need to go to our evolution options and go down to random seed and alt click and this will bring up this expression uh, toolbar here and you can go ahead and type in here time asterisk and then type in a number i'm going to type in 20 so that means it, um the speed of the animation will be 20 so these will um will change at that speed and now let's go back into our comp and look what happens so it kind of adds more variety to the um type of glitch i think i'm gonna make this a little bit shorter because glitches are usually pretty quick um, so yeah, we have we have one layer of text that's, that's glitching and then after that all I would do is just duplicate the layer duplicate and then I'm going to change The displacement map values of this one. I'm just gonna go up uh, Or down a little bit on the uh, on either one. It doesn't matter But I'm just gonna go down on the second one a little bit. So it's it's um, a different place and change the color Let's just go to a red like that duplicate it again and Let's go ahead and change the color now to like a blue and then change the value again and maybe one more time we'll do a green and maybe with the green I'll put it I'll change the X on that one a little bit and maybe the Y a little bit okay so now we have this but as you can see the the colors aren't blending so what we need to do is change our blending mode here for all the text layers um, so to do that you need to make sure you have this blending mode column um, visible and if you don't have it visible, you need to press F4 on your keyboard um, and that will appear for you. So now I can select all these layers. I'm gonna change them to screen. There we go. So now we have, you know, kind of a bit of a fringe and you can kind of adjust those values to, um, so that they're placed, you know, in the places that you want. Let me open up these keyframes real quick. Yeah, see, I thought I messed up here. I put extra keyframes here. Let me move these back in their proper place here. There we go. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much it for this method. You basically just play with play with those numbers and get the um, desired effect. And you can put this on any type of layer you want. So this next method is very similar, but it actually requires a lot fewer steps. Um, so all you have to do with this is kind of do the same thing. I'm going to add um, a new solid, so control Y, and doesn't matter the name, color, doesn't matter. And then add a fractal, oh, fractal, if I could spell, noise. And then I'm going to change the contrast and brightness to get some um, some black areas in here, and then that will work for us. So I'm gonna increase the contrast, I'm gonna lower the brightness a little bit. I think I'm gonna scale in as well. So transform, scale up, and maybe the complexity. Um, maybe I'll turn it up. I'll turn it up to 10. Okay. Now with this one, if I was animating it, I would animate the evolution and not the um, random seed. But I mean, if you want to do that, you can. I'm just going to do the evolution. So I'll click evolution and then time times. I'm going to put on 700 and see. So now it'll um, evolve at a decent speed here. And then when we go back to our, um, oh, I didn't pre-comp it yet. So let's go ahead and pre-comp this. So we'll control shift C and then I'm going to name it fractal Matt, sure, okay. And then um, turn off the visuals and then add displacement map onto our text. Okay, and then change our displacement map layer to the fractal mat. And now we have this going on, right? So all we do from here is just, you know, the same thing, you just adjust these values and you can do some really weird like melting sort of thing and for this for this sort of look i usually don't um duplicate the text and like fringe it like how i did you know the red blue and green with the other one this one i kind of just do i would do just animate this and that's literally all you need to do so i'm um, just do that for you uh you to bring up the keyframe and then you know down to zero so that's pretty much all there is to it and then i would probably turn this off to zero the uh horizontal so it's not 
If I had left it on five, it would have stayed, you know, melting like that. So we put this back on zero. Oops. So now we have that. Okay, so next we have our first plugin, and that's the um, our Cinema Spice plugin called Glitchify. This one I actually love a lot. You can do a whole lot with this. There's so many different ways to use this, but I'll, I'll go through each sort of setting in here and um, show you what I would do on on a scene if I were doing something like this. So um, let me open, open up a new comp here and um, show you what the stock Glitchify, whenever you put on Glitchify on, this, will, this is what you get, no keyframes or anything. So it'll just do this over the entire video. So, um, so right off the bat, if you wanted, to, if you were okay with how this looked and you just wanted to know to last a little while and then go away, all you do is change the keyframe, the amount I'm going to go ahead and do that. Now I'm gonna change up to a hundred percent and then tap you to bring up the keyframe, go down some frames and zero. So, so now we have that. If you're okay with that, then you're done. You don't really need to bother with all these settings, but I'm going to show you what all these different things do. So you can, create some really, really unique effects. Um, so let's go ahead and go down to our first one, which is the transition. And the transition completion, it's not something I actually mess with myself because when you turn this up, it actually turns the clip black. So I actually don't mess with that myself. But if you were doing something like this, maybe you wanted to, um, you know, keyframe this. Let me bring that keyframe up with you. And then you wanted to go this way from 100 to zero. Maybe you wanted that to happen. Yeah, I, I just don't do that personally. So there's that. So next, let's go to our transform glitch and see what this value is doing for us. So we have um, a lot of values in here. We have the speed of it, which is pretty self-explanatory position. If you change these, you can see what's happening. It's basically, it will allow you to literally um, let the clip animate um, in 2D space. So uh, I'll show you a little a little method here. So if you wanted to do something with the, um, the scale, I think this would look pretty nice. If you scaled it up a little bit, and then turn up the scale wiggle as well. I'm just gonna put it on about 33, I should, just so you can see what happens. Um, let me play this through. Let me turn. Let me turn off the amount um, animation so you can see this. So as you can see, it's kind of zooming in and out at random times. It's changing all those values. So you have that uh, option for you if you're trying to do something like that. Um, let me turn this back down to. Oop, not zero, 100, and then this down to zero, okay? And then you have the crop, which is self-explanatory. It'll crop your footage. Um, if you were trying to crop it, you can do that, and it'll kind of, like, break it up um, over certain areas. And then next we have the channel glitch, which is um, some probably my favorite part of this effect. And for this one, I'm actually going to I'm gonna turn off everything else so we can see this. So let me open these up, and, um, yeah, let me turn all of these other ones off real quick. Okay, so right now, this is what the channel glitch does. Um, if you turn this on and off so you can see. This kind of does something similar to Trap Code Form almost. It takes like the layer and duplicates it and, you know, meshes it so you have like almost, um, almost like particles uh, type of look. So in here we have the, um, the settings for that split and you can adjust, you know, how far these particles are going to be moving or... Um, the position on that sort of thing speed multiplier there's that and then the channel scale same sort of thing you can you can kind of make this look like if you animated this this would be pretty cool um, let, me, let me do that so you can see what, what that would look like if you had this way high and then you know it kind of comes into form put this down to zero uh, you know something like that if you want to play with the setting there Kind of trippy but um uh what else we have in here we have the <clears throat> transfer mode which will allow the particles that um that show up they will let me turn this back up so you can see this okay so they will um they'll look completely different to basing on the mode there's a whole bunch of different settings in here so let's look at the color burn you know there's um multiply I mean, it, it, the list goes on, on and on. So whatever you're trying to do, just just with the, cha the uh, channel glitch, you have all these options. So let me um let me reset this right there. So this is back to default settings, and let's do um another one. So let me turn off channel glitch, and we're gonna focus on. Let me go ahead and close that, and we're gonna focus on color glitch next. So let me look at that. So this one's pretty self-explanatory. Um, it basically 
uh, duplicate the colors and move them to a different spot and you can change that spot with this um, offset value here and then you can you know the amount of colors that it's pulling into the into the uh, uh, effect the opacity of them if you want really strong really weak that sort of thing transfer mode same thing you can do all different types of transfer modes um, so next we have the image glitch an image glitch uh, image glitch is pretty similar to pixel sorter if you're familiar with that um, plugin, I'm not going to go into that today because it's right here, basically. Um, yeah, so image glitch, let me close this one. It has um, the pixel streaks, which is like the pixel sorter like I was talking about. It'll kind of like melt the keyframe, or not the keyframes, but the colors. And um, you can change it to vertical if you wanted to do that with this little checkbox right here. And next we have the glitch slice. Um, the glitch slice is that white bar that you see going across the screen this right here and you can adjust those set that setting so if you want it to be really you know subtle you can change the position of it the opacity the transfer mode the same thing again all these different transfer modes for it so next we also have glitch block um, settings which will which are these little small boxes and you can change you know how many there are with the amount the speed that they're that they're coming on and off screen um, with the speed multiplier the horizontal size you know, um, the vertical size, all that, all that jazz. Um, so let me reset this cause it's getting kind of messy. Okay. <laughs> Let's, uh, uncheck that and then I'll go to our last one, which is compression glitch. And by default, oh, I, let me turn these other ones off cause I reset it. So I turn back on. Okay. So by default, compression glitch is actually disabled because, um, let me turn this on and I'll show you what it does. So enable it and I'm gonna turn this up all the way. So you may not be able to tell right now, but I'm going to zoom in. And maybe you can tell now what it does it literally lowers the compression value for the footage so it make, basically just makes the quality worse um which is cool you know it, it's really cool but the problem with this is that a lot of um a lot of media don't project this well so things like twitter instagram youtube they'll they'll recompress the video again when you upload it so it won't the grain this is basically a, a grain and grains don't work well when uploading to sites like that so that's probably why they have it disabled by default. But if you're trying to do that, you can you can adjust that multiplier there. So that's pretty much it for Glitchify. Let's go ahead and move on to the next one, which is our Red Giant Universe Glitch. And let's go ahead and look at this one again. So this one, this one actually has a lot of different presets. So this is one look that I created. But um, if we look into the uh, settings right here, you can you can do a lot of stuff really really quickly. So um, let's go ahead and look at one of these presets. So you just click on this drop down arrow under presets and then you have all these different ones. So let's go ahead and click, um, let's click data stripes and see what this does. So this creates, you know, this sort of look and it, it does it all, it changes all these values for you. So another thing that you could do is you could put a preset on and look at the values and learn from it and create your own. So, um, there's so many different in here. I mean, you just try these out and it makes it so much easier. So you don't have to do the, do these things manually, which would be a pain. Um, but yeah, so let me um, control Z back to my setting. Okay, so this is what I had. And the thing with universe glitch is that the values in this effect are actually pretty straightforward because there's no extra values here. These are all sliders. Um, so you literally just um, can figure out what these do just by just by looking at it. So the RG, RGB split max will increase that value and the RGB split will um, be stronger. So then you change the size of these and you can change the how many of these will actually fit on screen and how big they are. So pretty self-explanatory stuff. I figured I'd just show you, you know, um, that this effect is here and it's really, really useful if you're trying to get this sort of look. So lastly, we have the BCC cross glitch, which is this one right here. And this one by by default is honestly pretty nice on its own. Let me go and in, go in this new comp and show you this is the um, default settings. So make sure this is reset. Okay. So by default, this is what you're going to get. And then um, say you're okay with how this looked, if you wanted to animate the, um, you know, the timing of it, all you do is go to the animation value right here, or drop down arrow right here, and put on percent done. And then you can adjust um, when the animation happens. So you can just keyframe this, you know, from zero to 100. And it'll go, th it'll go throughout its animation. It's a little longer. 
And you may have and you may have noticed that when I selected the effect that you have all these uh, this graph and this these circles, these represent different values um, in the effect. So if you have if you hover over one of these circles, it'll tell you what it does. So this is the flicker group intensity. So if you wanted to um, let me I'm going to go through each one and show you what they do individually. So let's go down the list and I'll go through each one and show you what each value does. So let me turn all these off real quick and then. Um, yeah, let me we'll start with the first one. So enable block damage. So block damage is the um, is these blocks here, and there's so many, so much detail you can do with just this alone. So the values that I would focus on the most with block damage would be the um, the block size, which is just how big the, the blocks are, obviously, and then the uh, saturation. You can do some really uh, weird things with that, and then the um, the blending mode. Obviously, there's a lot of things you can do with this one. And then my favorite part is the pattern amount. So if you were to turn this amount up, you can see, let me zoom in here. You can see that there's more and more detail the higher this value is, um, lower is like nothing. And then if you like had that value up really high, you could scale it up and it'll still look, you know, like there's a lot of detail in there. Um, so that's pretty much all would change for, for that effect there. Let's go and move on to the next one. And the next one we have the um, enable shift. And the shift is like is something that you could do with a displacement map. You know, if you um if you had a fractal noise or if you just had black bars, um if you create a shape layer, I could do that real quick and show you, um, and put a displacement map, you can make this split like this, um the same way we did um where is that? And this one, how this is split. It's the same thing going on. Okay. And we go on let's open up these advanced settings here and see what we have in here. So we have the minimum intensity, which is like how far how far is the splice the splice actually going to happen? So if you want it to make sure it has a really really large splice, you can turn up the intensity really high, and it'll it'll shift it really really far, or vice versa. Zero is going to like bring it down to as, as minimum as it possible. That's the smallest amount it'll shift. Next, there's the, my favorite part of this uh, little effect. It's the um, the jitter which basically adds miniature splices within the splices. So it like, you know, makes it really, really interesting there. Uh, turn that up will make it more intense. Okay. And lastly, it was the shift amount, which is right here, which I feel like they should have put on the top because this is kind of like the master for this whole thing. Um, you know, turn this up is self-explanatory, but it'll, it controls how much total shift there is. If it's on zero, it's not going to shift at all. And um, yeah, that's all there is to it. And next, let's go ahead and move on to the shake. So let me turn off the shift and go down to shake. Turn this on. Now, shake is probably one of my favorite parts of this effect because I feel like it bring it really brings the um the whole thing to life. Um, that little shake just I don't know it's just it's just a nice touch. And of course, you can adjust the amount of RGB split with this value right here. Increasing it will make it you know really really strong. I usually don't have it too high. I think I like I think it looks a lot better when it's pretty low. Um, but yeah, it's up to your up to you. And you can rotate this even a little bit if you wanted to do that to where it kind of shakes at an angle a little bit. It's easier if you play it. Um, let me increase the amount. Yeah. And by default, it's shaking on Y only. And if you want it to be on X instead or on both, you can you know turn up the X and Y at the same time. If you want, if you want to do straight X, you can just do that. Yeah, with those values right there. All right, next we have the uh, flicker value. So let me turn off the shake and open up the flicker. Let me turn this enable flicker, turn this on. And let's play this real quick so you can see what's happening here. So it almost looks like a flash of lightning <laughs> by, by itself. You can almost use that for that. But so with the flicker settings, the things that I would adjust is the peak position, which is the basically the timing and what percent that um, Basically, in between these keyframes, you know, we have this percent down zero to uh, 100. What point is the um, the flicker going to peak in between the zero and 100? So imagine, um, if I put this on the 100, that means the, the flicker is going to peak at that point as well, which doesn't see, as you see, you can hardly see it at all because it's actually peaking here, which when the animation is actually done. So if you want to peak right in the middle, you put it on 50. I think it's on 50 by default. So yeah, so it'll peak right there. And then, you know, if you want to peak earlier, you lower it. So it'll peak earlier on in our let me lower a little bit more. Okay. But yeah, you, you get the point there. So that's pretty much all we have for Flickr. Um, next, we're going to the animation tuning, which is pretty much like the most important part of this whole thing. Let me turn all these back on and um, let me play this through so you can see the difference 
before and after. So by default with the um the animation is on easy ease in and out at, at these values. So if we click on the effect here, you can see the you can actually see the graph. That's the yellow line here. And if you want, you can actually just click and drag these three circles. So we have this one here, this one in the middle, and you know, this one here. So you can actually it's basically a graph editor on your screen. So if you did it like this, that means it's going to peak. Let me play this through. It's going to peak right in the middle and then it's going to be really slow. So you can um, also do the values in here if you want to do that. If it's easier for you here, you can actually um, see that it's going to be fast here. You know, it's going to start off really, really quickly and then spike again and then slow down if that's what you're trying to do. Yeah, there's this has a lot of potential because there's so many different values and different things you can do. You can isolate these, obviously, if you're trying to just do one at a time. Yeah, but all in all, this effect will save you a ton of time. Um, so playing with this a couple hours is nothing compared to, to doing all these things manually it would take you hundreds of hours to, you know, master all that. So so plugins can really save your life if you're, if you're able to get your hands on them. So. Um, yeah, but if you, if you have the time and the, uh, the patience to do things manually, you can do that. But, um, yeah, that's pretty much all I have for this tutorial. Uh, leave a like if you guys enjoyed and subscribe if you really enjoyed and I'll see you guys next time.